Hi, I am Dr. Shubhangi Vaikoye, working as Associate Professor in Computer Engineering Department at Dattamage College of Engineering, Erul. This is the subject-specific environmental awareness video created during fourth week of four weeks of international FDP on Open Education for Better World. It's a project of UNESCO, University of Novi Gorica, Slovenia. The subject selected is Machine Learning for Environment and Sustainable E-Waste Management. The instrument, process or software used in this case study is the concept of ML and the Zen robot. These are the details of first week video. In this video, we have seen how the machine learning or the Zen robotics is used in e-waste management. First, we'll revise the contents of week one. Today's electronics are gadgets. Tomorrow's electronics are waste. E-waste describes discarded electronics or electrical devices. Informal processing of e-waste can lead to adverse human health effects and environmental pollution. These are the types of e-waste. E-waste generated from laptops, monitors, personal electronic devices, mobile phones, audio, video equipment, scanner, printers, television, computers, etc. Next is the effects of e-waste on the environment. Emission from the e-waste create environmental damage. Toxic chemicals from e-waste enters the soil crap food pathway. E-waste are non-biodegradable and cause soil pollution. E-waste dumping yards and nearby places are polluted and cause health hazards. We have seen how ML is used in e-waste management. There are two ways to sort waste materials before recycling. Either we can drop the waste into separate trash bins or letting trash bins sort themselves through an automatic system. If everything is dumped into one trash bin, sorting for recycling can be a tiresome task. To tackle this manually, different countries have different color-coded dustbins for dumping different waste materials. But manual separation of waste materials or throwing into separate trash bin is somewhat confusing as human beings can make mistakes. People can get confused as to where to dump the waste because they are not sure of the actual material of packaging and devices. This is where machine learning comes in. Employing machine learning in garbage sorting and disposal process is a better method for smart recycling and waste management. ML and various sensors including RFID tags can be used. Many intelligent dustbins have been developed that are equipped with ML programs such as classification algorithms and IoT sensors in the waste management sectors. Multitasking sorting ML robots have been developed for waste management that can sort tons of garbage on daily basis. We have seen the working of the Zen robot, a robot used for sorting in week one. So this is the recap of week one video. Now, these are the details of week two video. In week two, we have seen the environmental standards for e-waste management. How e-waste management is done? There are two ways. One is processing techniques and second is recycling. There are two processing techniques. We can disassemble or tear down the parts or we can reuse the item or part more than once. Normal strategy is minimize the uses, reuse and then recycle. Now we'll see recycling standards. Recycling is the key component of modern waste generation. It's a third component of reduce, reuse, recycle waste hierarchy. As we already seen, there are two ISO standards relating to recycling. ISO 15270 and ISO 14001. These standards are used for plastic weight and for environmental management control of recycling practice. The recycling consumer waste generally requires collection of waste or can be drop off to drop off centers, buyback centers, curbside collection, then sorting. 
here we have already seen this sorting process can be done manually or machine learning robots can be used for this we have also seen the benefits of recycling the recycling is the effective solution to the growing e-waste problem it reduces the amount of green gas pollution caused by the hazardous disposal can be avoided now next we have seen the laws and rules by government of india e-waste management and handling rules shall apply to producer consumer or bulk consumers involved in the manufacturing it is also applicable to sell purchase and processing of electrical and electronic equipment also applicable to collection centers dismantlers and recyclers of e-waste the next is authorization dealings with the laws the authorizations are central pollution control board delhi state pollution control board or committees of union territories then urban local bodies that is municipal committees or council now the next is which are the global organization that deals with this first one is the step that is solve the e-waste problem this is initiated in late 2004 which has grown to 50 plus members today this includes members from industry international organization governments ngos etc next is address the mess.com this organization believes in increasing the awareness about environment and sustainability and e-waste management encouraging recycling utilization of renewable energy we should focus on renewable energy and we should minimize the carbon footprint carbon emission results from our each and every activity every utility that we use if we compare the carbon footprint of the months before and during the lockdown we can see the tremendous effects the next is silicon valley toxics this promotes human health and environmental justice next is bessel action network this addresses global environmental injustice economic inefficiency of toxic grade promoting sustainable solutions and attempts to ban waste trade. It works for human rights and environment. Next is the World Reuse, Repair and Recycling Association. This association improves the quality of exported electronics, improve trade practices through fair trade principles, encourages recycling standards. Next, is what are the strategies that can be adopted what can consumer do keep your electronics longer instead of replacing them if discarding old electronics be sure to recycle them at a trusted recycling center purchase electronics that do not have hazardous materials what can producer do extend producer responsibility design for environment what can government or regularities do Produce subsidy for recycling to producer, keep track of collection and recycling, regulate recycler, create public awareness and do eco leveling. Now, we'll see what are the standards, what are the ISO standards and other standards applicable for the e-waste management. The first is Vilabvex. This introduced in 2011. This sets out an integrated set of pan-European requirements separately covering collection, logistic, treatment, and outlet management. This organization also acts as an auditor, can organize audits to determine whether a company is compliant or not. This is the first ever introduced e-waste standards in Europe. This certification is the most important certification for e-waste recycling operator in Europe. Next is R2, that is Sustainable Electronics Recycling International. The R2 2013 standard managed by SERI is a partnership between the public, private and non-profit sectors with the mission of creating voluntary market-based mechanism for ensuring best practices in electronics recycling. This sets international environmental and occupational health and safety standards for the electronics refurbishing and recycling industry. Participating electronics recyclers facilitates and managers are evaluated and must have one or more system in place certified through an accredited third party waste management needs to be based on hierarchy principle when it comes to exporting recycle recyclable to developing nations r2 standards dictate full legality and compliance with due diligence measures
Equipment needs to be handled according to specific guidelines from reception to processing after export. Furthermore, vendors are only allowed to export to processing facilities that have demonstrated compliance with health and environmental standards. The next standard is OHSAS 18001 published in 2007. It is for health and safety. It is an international occupational health and safety management system specification. Companies who are certified to this standard demonstrate their commitment to managing health and safety risk and improving their performance. This is an important standard for industry as implementation of strong safety programs can help avoid hazardous exposure or physical injury. Next is ISO 14001 published in 2015. This is an international standard for environmental management system rather than pushing environmental performance requirements. This standard provides a framework that companies can follow. The goal of this certification is to reduce the environmental footprint of a business and decrease the pollution and waste. The program exists to help organizations minimize how their operations negatively affect the environment. Next is ISO 9001 to 50, 2015. It is for quality. This outlines requirements for a quality management system that can be applied to any industry anywhere in the world. There are more than 1 million organizations in over 170 countries certified to ISO 9001. This standard helps organization to improve efficiencies and customer satisfaction. Quality management principles that fall under this standard focus on the client, identify inefficiencies, motivate upper management, and help to maintain the continuous improvement. Next is 27001. It is for security. It is a set of standards that specifies an organization's information security management system. Certified companies have implemented a framework of policies and procedures that considers all elements in their information risk management processes. Businesses certified to ISO 27001 standards have high controls in place to keep informational assets secure, which is valuable and in the client base interest. Now, we'll see what are the video outcomes. After learning through this video, the students will be able to adapt or appreciate environment friendly and sustainability practices for e-waste management, which is the necessity of the R. Validate or evaluate the impact of three R techniques on carbon emission of e-waste. Calculate the carbon footprint of e-waste. Then develop sustainable e-waste management system using machine learning and also compare different standards for e-waste. Now, we'll see how to calculate the carbon footprint for the e-waste. Before that, we'll see what is the meaning of carbon footprint. The total number of greenhouse gas emissions caused by an entity or an individual or a product is called as the carbon footprint. The carbon footprint is calculated as this uses multiplied by emission factor. These are the formulae to calculate carbon footprint of electricity, LPG, waste, and travel. Here, the emission factor represents the average emission rate of a given source relative to units of activity or processes. The table shows the emission factor of electricity, LPG, batteries, CD, DVD, glass, municipal waste, and travel. Here the battery, CD, DVD, municipal waste represent the e-waste. For travel, it can be land, air, or sea travel. Depending on the mode of transport and vehicle use, the emission factor differs. Now, we will see a case study of carbon footprint calculations. Here, carbon emission is calculated for household considering electricity consumption, heating oil, and LPG. It's 0 0.05 metric tons of CO2. Here for the carbon footprint calculation, a carbon footprint calculator is used. Next is for travel. 
this figure shows the carbon emission for air travel for a round trip of mumbai to raipur emission is 0.26 metric tons this figure will change based on the distance and based on your journey the next is traveling by car emission is 0.01 metric tons now we we'll see the carbon footprint calculation for the electronic items suppose we purchase the it equipment and electronic equipment frequently then old items becomes the e waste here emission is 0.57 metric tons this is the individual carbon footprint considering all previous items it's 0.8 8.9 metric tons imagine for individual it is 0. metric tons then what will be the figure of globe it's a really alarming situation now we will say the impact of recycling of e waste on carbon footprint if we recycle the e waste then we can reduce carbon emission we can save trees we can produce new items here suppose we recycle one computer one laptop one monitor two cell phones then we can reduce 96.60 kilograms of carbon emission we can save eight trees we can produce 137 liters of petrol and 309 plastic bottles so here we can say that the sustainability of e waste can be achieved by recycling now we will see the waste reduction model here the baseline scenario represents what will be the emission if we recycle and the alternative scenario represents what will be the emission if we adopt the technology of reduce reuse and recycle here we can see that there is a reduction in carbon emission using the reduction model so in the baseline scenario we have only recycled items in the alternative scenario we have reduced the items then recycled the items so you can see here this is equivalent to removing annual emissions from 16 passenger vehicles conserving 8835 gallons of gasoline conserving 3271 cylinders of propane used for home barbecues next is analysis for emission or carbon storage type next is the analysis for management practices that is how much percentage we have used for reduction how much for recycling then how much for landfilling combustion etc next is analysis of material contribution that is the type of the e waste it is a desktop it is a peripheral it is a portable equipment it is a crt etc next is the analysis for impact by source or the offset so here we can say that if we adapt the 3r technologies then obviously we can reduce the more amount of carbon emissions so we have seen how to calculate the carbon footprint and what is the impact of the reduction model on the carbon emission now we'll see the sustainability standards for e waste management there are different terminologies associated with e waste management system like e waste categories policies initiatives technology and pr implementation composition of the e waste is very diverse and complex e waste contains more than 1000 substances which can be classified as hazardous and non hazardous substances the electrical and electronic equipment can be broadly categorized as large household appliances as refrigerator freezer washing machine cooking appliances etc small household appliances as vacuum cleaners watches grinders etc it and telecommunication equipment as pcs printers telephones etc 
consumer equipment as TV, radio, video camera, amplifiers, lighting equipment as CFL, high intensity sodium lamp, electrical and electronic tools as drills, saws, sewing machine, toys, leisure and sport equipment as computer or video games, electric trains, etc. Medical devices, with the exception of all implanted and infected products, radiotherapy equipment, cardiology, dialysis, monitoring and control instruments as smoke detector, heating regulators, thermostat, automatic dispensers for hot drink, money, hot and cold bottles. Next is policies or laws. E-waste management and handling rules are applicable to producer, consumer, collection centers, dismantlers, and recyclers. These policies are, one is extended producer responsibility or product take back forms the basis of policy framework in developed countries. Next is waste electrical and electronic equipment directive. It provides a regulatory basis for collection, recovery, and reuse or recycling targets. The fundamental principle of WEEE is producers are responsible for e-waste take back. Next is reuse, recycling, and recovery. Here, reuse means to use something again that you would normally throw away. Example, the glass jar for food or plastic bag for green liners. Recycle means the product goes through a mechanical process to change its form. Resource recovery occurs after reuse, reuse and recycle have been attempted. Recovery process focuses on the recovery of the substance from that waste. Next, we will see the initiatives taken by different organizations. One is solve the e-waste problem. Next is address the mess.com, then Silicon Valley Toxics, Bessel Action Network, and the World Reuse, Repair, and Recycling Association. Now, we'll see the technology in e-waste management. At the first level, e-waste is given as input. Here, decontamination, that is removal of all liquids and gases, is done. Then dismantling and segregation is done. Here we have already seen how machine learning and robotics is used for segregation in week one week. In the second level, hammering, shredding is done. Then it is given to special treatment processes like CRT treatment consisting of separation of funnels and screen glass, electromagnetic separation, eddy current separation, and density separation using water. In the third level, recycling processes as chemical, mechanical, or thermal is done. Recovery processes, that is, river battery furnace, leaching, smelting, electrolytic is done. And finally, we get recovered material as output. Here, disposal means allocation of garbage that can no longer be recycled or restored as a landfill. Next is 3R implementation, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Basically, the 3R concept is a sequence of steps on how to manage waste properly. The top priority is reduce. We have already seen the impact of reduce model. Reduce, which is used to reduce waste generation, then reuse and recycle to give waste material a second chance before disposing them to the landfill. Now we'll see the sustainability practices that should be adopted for e-waste management. A country has to develop a flexible and adaptive system that can handle the variability in quantity and quality of e-waste flow. Figure shows the roadmap or the trade chain of electronic and electrical equipments. Journey from manufacturer or importer to recycler or disposal, found in most of the Indian cities. In India, most of the operations related to e-waste, such as collection, segregation, dismantling, recycling, and disposals, are performed manually. In absence of the adequate technologies and equipment,
most of the techniques used for recycling or treatment of e-waste are very wrong and dangerous. Improper recycling and disposal operations found in different cities of India often involve the open burning of plastic waste, exposure to toxic solders, dumping of acids and widespread general dumping. As a result, pollutants are dumped into land, air and water, which are the cause of serious environmental problems in India. The best available practices from different countries can be adopted to manage e-waste effectively. Next is close the loop practice can be implemented for proper disposal of the product. That is not only forward supply chain, but also the reverse supply chain should be analyzed. This concept is like closing product or material loop as an objective for industrial systems. The essential idea is that in place of conceptualizing a product life cycle as a linear sequence of processes, from material extraction through to manufacturer use and ultimately waste management to instead use the analogy of an ecological network of interacting flaws. Closing product loop expresses this idea through bringing components back from later to earlier stages. Closing products and materials loops must be increasingly considered how products and materials can cross boundaries to move to potential reuses and or return to manufacturing centers. Next is producers, that is manufacturers have to take responsibility to handle the waste so that proper management and disposal of e-waste can be done. Public-private partnership can also play very important role in management of e-waste. It is also important that legislation should ensure the recycling and reuse of e-waste. For example, in USA, there is a voluntary practice called electronic recycler pledge of true stewardship. The extra benefits or incentives can be given to people engaged in informal recycling so that they would sell their e-waste to organize e-waste handling units. Moreover, basic sustainability practices that is reduce, reuse, recycle should not be ignored. Systematic management should be started from product manufacturing stage. The various reuse options can be secondhand product, modified product, after repair and reuse of old parts in new product. The products must be reused after recycling as this processes results in saving of raw material as well as energy. If we adopt these practices, then surely sustainability can be achieved in e-waste management. Now, we see the sustainability computation. The Zen Robotics, as we have seen in week one, the machine learning concept and robotic concepts are combined together in the Zen Robots. The Zen robotic system can handle a maximum of 20 kilograms of recyclable material in one pick. The picking cycle is three seconds and a machine can do 1400 picks per hour, 5000 hours per year without maintenance. So in this week four video, we have seen the week one content, that is how the machine learning and the robot, that is Zen Robotics is used for the e-waste management system. Then in the week two, we are seeing what are the different standards that are applicable to the e-waste management. Then in this video, we have seen how the sustainability is achieved in the e-waste management. We have also seen how the carbon footprint is calculated for the e-waste. Then, what is the impact of the reduction on the carbon emission? Then, we have so seen the sustainability computation for the e-waste management system. Thank you.